my name is Sherry Werb and I'm Director of Education and Outreach here at the National Museum of Natural History at the Smithsonian. Um, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the programs of the Sand Ocean Hall, um, one of our new exhibitions here at the museum. Um, our exhibits, as most people can see, use a lot of objects and there's a lot of information, a lot of things from our collections that you'll see on site here. But a lot of people don't realize that we have over a hundred scientists that actually do the research and bring their collections back to the museum. A lot of our scientists have told us over the years that they got inspired to do science because they had an encounter with a scientist. And so what we're trying to do is bring our scientists into the exhibit halls through a program that we call The Scientist is In. Um, on Wednesdays from 1 to 3 o'clock, we invite um, scientists down. We just ask them to bring some tools of their science, some objects that they may have collected into the hall, and then invite the public to ask them questions and to talk a little bit about what they do. I think The Scientist is in right now. Why don't we go check? Hi, my name is Carol Baldwin. I'm a research zoologist, also called a curator of fishes, uh, here at the Smithsonian's Natural History Museum. Uh, my research uh, emphasis is on diversity and uh, evolution of coral reef and deep sea fishes, and I'm one of three scientists who served as curators developing content um, for the new Sant Ocean Hall. Um, before I answer questions, I'd just like to thank the editors at Deep Sea News uh, for hosting this first The Scientist is In web blog. Okay, um, Cheryl from the Intersection blog wants to know how to make uh, healthy and sustainable seafood choices in the uh, uh, face of information overload and also if our seafood choices really do make a, make a difference. Um, I have a couple of suggestions. Um, one, if you simply want to know what the good choices are and what the not so good choices are, um, you might want to go to the Monterey Bay Aquarium's website and just download their seafood wallet card. This is a little card that has uh, good choices, okay choices, and, and bad choices. Um, but if you, really, if you really want to learn more about the issues and, and become a more informed uh, consumer, um, you might want to pick up a copy of my uh, Sustainable Seafood Cookbook, um, which has a whole chapter on current issues, uh, environmental issues regarding uh, U.S. seafood. And we also have a Smithsonian Seafood website um, that uh, covers the same topics. In terms of whether your seafood choices really make a difference or not, um, uh, the answer is yes. And I'll just give you one example of um, why this is the case. In the early 1980s, uh, when Louisiana chef Paul Prudhomme introduced blackened redfish to the American seafood scene, uh, the catch of redfish, also called red drum, in the uh, Gulf of Mexico increased by 10 million pounds in a three-year period. Uh, this high catch rate was not sustainable. Uh, the population crashed and the fishery for it collapsed. And this was entirely due to uh, consumer demand. So your seafood choices can indeed make a big difference. Uh, while we're on the sustainable seafood topic, uh, Miriam from the Oysters Garter uh, wants to know if it's possible to sustainably harvest a, a large, slow-growing deep sea fish like Chilean sea bass. Um, you can do that, and in fact, uh, one population, one fishery of Chilean sea bass off of uh, South Georgia Island has been certified sustainable by the Marine Stewardship Council. Um, but there are, you know, uh, specific catch rates that are set, and they are very tightly monitored. So this isn't like a blanket approval to go out and buy, you know, any Chilean sea bass you see. It's only one population, one fishery, and uh, if you see that Marine Stewardship Council label on the uh, seafood, then that's a good choice to buy. Otherwise, I'd take a pass on Chilean sea bass. Mark from the Blogfish blog has uh, a question about the parasitic males of some anglerfishes. Uh, what happens is when male anglerfishes first hatch out of the egg, they're fully formed little fish, 
and they go in search of a female, and when they find one, they bite into her. And here's an example of a male uh, anglerfish on a female, and this is a triple wart sea devil. Uh, we actually have a specimen here, and the big fish is the female, and the two little projections hanging off of the belly um, are the male anglerfishes. Once these males are attached, they are fully dependent on the females. They are parasitic. They get all of their nutrients from her, and they're there just for the purpose of sexual reproduction, which, if you think about it, locating a mate in the deep, dark sea could be difficult, so they've solved the problem by having the males attached to the females. And the specific question is why this strategy exists. And I think the, the simple answer to that is because it works. And we see this in nature all the time. Different uh, strategies of uh, reproduction have evolved, and those that work um, are the ones that uh, survive and are passed down from generation to generation. There's also a question about whether this reproductive strategy uh, sheds any light on human behavior and I have to laugh at that because every time I tell this story um, women are usually nodding their heads saying that sounds about right and uh, men aren't quite so sure about it so I leave it to you to decide whether or not uh, parasitic males getting all of their uh, nutrients from females and being there just for sexual reproduction uh, sheds any light on human behavior. <laughs> I'd just like to thank you for your questions and I hope you all have a chance to come see our new ocean exhibit. Um, we have lots of fascinating specimens uh, including this coelacanth. Uh, if you have questions that weren't answered, feel free to drop by the museum every Wednesday afternoon for The Scientist is In. Many of my colleagues will be hosting that. And uh, you can always uh, dive into our website at uh, ocean.si.edu. See you soon.